more approach for like county need to amend some county rules that like we need to do some here. Uh, we are here for a work session on July 12th to discuss the possibility or options for um, covering operational expenses in the future uh, if and when the school district uh, passes a bond to construct a new pool and um, uh, and moves forward with that um, and including specifically uh, issues around uh, a new county sales tax that would need to go on the ballot this November um, or that possibly could go on the ballot this November uh, to cover those operational expenses. Cool. Um, so I'm going to uh, provide you guys with an overview um, the sales tax where we are in the county um, and what that looks like. So many thanks to staff for pulling this together so quickly. I'm going to have some other numbers for you guys to digest uh, for your discussion. Okay, um, so I want to start to remind everyone, so as the city and the county created the uh, Regional Housing Authority, you did allow for it to, of course, go to the ballot, but to levy a tax, um, and it, I believe it is up to, well, it's up to half a mil, but otherwise uh, you could do up to 1% sales tax, um, you know, looking at the treasurer's office data and finance office data, 21 sales tax was a little over 800,000, 22, you know, about, uh, about 950K. Uh, the IGA does not uh, describe or prescribe how that revenue can be used. Um, obviously, I, you know, we can assume it will go towards construction or um, programming for the Regional Housing Authority. So just a reminder there. Um, so looking at these numbers, the total sales tax rate in Lake County is 6.9%. The Lake County sales tax rate is at 4%. And then there's the state sales tax rate, you know, that's across the board at the state of 2.9%. Uh, the sales tax is, um, you know, it's where this, the, the city of Leadville does not have a sales tax. However, given it is its own jurisdiction and they have their own NIAC and I, uh, codes, um, so any NAICS codes, so any any sales done within the city limits, they get their share of the sales tax revenue. Okay. Um, and we, you know, any any sales tax done in the county uh, provides uh, county revenue. I do not have time to fully break out the calculations, but if you look at the far right column, you see the total of uh, combined property and sales taxes in the county, which will give you an idea of the total tax burden uh, in imposed by Lake County. Um, and so if you look at, uh, you know, 22 last year, you know, total sales tax revenue between the city and the county, is 3.9 million uh, projections for this year, looking at about 4.5, you know, going out. Um, you, know, you can see where they go out in the longer term, longer range projections, uh, same with the property taxes, uh, held constant at the, the variables we have now. Um, and that 15, and it, there's also that 15% increase after 2022 and kind of accounting for inflation. It is important to remember for given the inflation in 22 and 23, those are great numbers, but you should probably subtract, you know, 22, like 11% inflation and 23 probably subtract about 6% due to the increase of the cost of goods and services. Of course, businesses, um, you know, in, they increase there. Uh, the price of their products, uh, therefore in inflating the, the numbers of sales tax. So just keep that in so, mind. So even though that number looks like, wow, it's doubling, it's actually the purchasing power is probably constant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that makes okay. sense. And uh, so we also have, a, there's another uh, form of revenue, which is the tourism revenue. Um, you guys have seen this, so this is split between the city and county, but just important for you guys to think through of the projects that the tourism panel and the tourism director work on jointly for the city and county, um, and this is uh, provided by the lodging tax uh, in the county. Um, so just another another area for you guys to, to consider. Um, okay, there we go. 
Um, and then, what I want to, you know, Adam and Dan, can you see the, uh, the, the spreadsheet? Yes, I can see it. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, so if you look at 2023 sales tax summaries of where we're at, this is looking at where we have collected. Um, so um, try and get it all on one so you guys can see it, which might not happen. That's annoying. Anyway, column C is the city, column D is the county, column E is the total thus far this year. Monthly. Yeah, monthly broken out by month. You can see the totals down here of the, the total revenues that we have uh, brought in. Uh, in terms of sales tax revenue, this chart over here is kind of uh, city's blue, county's orange. Obviously, the line drops down because we're not in, we're not uh, at our July reporting yet. July is not over. We can kind of see the trend of where it's at. Um, so just another another way for you to think through uh, uh, sales tax um, and increases. And I want to go back to this slide here. So in, when you're looking at this and considering sales taxes, I, we didn't have time to fully break out, but um, you know, you can, if you're thinking about a, a quarter percent increase, point, you know, half percent increase, one percent, two percent increase, you can just do the math from these total numbers on, on how much revenue that would bring in. Right. Um, and considering, you know, where we're at uh, for 22, so an increase of one percent, according to the treasurer's office, would be, you know, $950,000, which is, you know, a decent amount. Um, um, so do you have any questions or comments on these numbers? I guess one question is, so if the county increased sales tax, I mean, just say whatever, whatever, like say 1%, that, but the intent is to go to pool operations, does, it, does, it, does the city's share still go to the city? So, so we would, so we would also like, Inadvertently collect, or we, we would either inadvertently increase their sales tax, or we would want like the city to also agree to not to not allocate yeah. that portion yeah. to back to whatever entity is operating the pool. Correct. Oh, good. Well, how okay. does so wait? Isn't it through an MOU though that we remit the city sales tax? Like, what if we just revoked the MOU for that? I, I mean, that uh, excellent question. I don't because I don't know. The <laughs> I, well, I don't know the logistics of it because I think you know, like the city of Silverthorn or the town of Silverthorn has a different sales tax rate than Summit County. But if the city doesn't hasn't actually elected to have a sales tax, why do we give them sales tax? Uh, that is a great question, one that I can't answer, but I can. Okay. I will get the information uh, for you. I, I'm not trying to like no, no, steal I, the city's <laughs> revenue by any means, but I want to make sure that like, you know, as we go through this, like there's an understanding of if the county increases above and beyond the 4%, would that be an opportunity for the city to memorialize their 4% that they get? And then the county collects 6%, mm -hmm. the city collects 4% or whatever? I don't know. Yeah. or. And I get somewhat related to that is also, I mean, we we can't increase the sales tax just for things happening in the county. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, okay. I, I, I'm not yeah. sure on that. Um, <laughs> well, we're yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> um, good questions. I'm going to pause the sharing real quick. Um, I mean, I don't think we'd want to do that because that so much of the sales tax occurs in the city. Yeah. But and the bulk of their budget is yeah. sales tax revenue, right? Right. Uh, like they get more Yeah, more more than their property tax. Right. It's like, right. It's like sort of the inverse yeah. of us. Mm -hmm. So I believe that I'm just okay. Can you use a hometown example? So <clears throat> The tax rate in Winter Park, Colorado is 11.2%. Uh, 
Um, so there's the 2.9%, 1.3% for Grand County, and then Winter Park is its own municipality has a 7% tax rate. Holy cow. Um, so if we look at... Do the town of Silver Park. Um, and I can share again. Sorry, Adam and Dan, let me share this. Uh, you can utilize the Department, Colorado Department of Revenue's website to look up um, sales and use tax data. So if you look, you know, Colorado is the 2.9, like County has the 4%. Um, Wait, and sorry, sorry. And, and why doesn't Leadville have its own sales tax? I don't know. That's, a, that's why I don't. That's why I don't. That's why I'm asking about yeah. the legality of us splitting the sales tax by jurisdiction if they haven't. Yeah. If they don't have anything memorialized that says, I, th I think it's just through an MOU, but I don't know if there's an MOU with the state of Colorado or just between so, the city so and the county. So maybe it's just been like to reduce the administrative burden. Like if they had their own sales tax, they'd have to have like a mechanism to collect it. Yeah. All the things. Yeah, so I just don't do it that way. Yeah, I have so no idea. Yeah. But I think it's something for us to look into. Yeah. Because we're yeah. going to have to if we go to the ballot for a sales tax. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I, think I, I looked up. I already understand this. I think we did. <laughs> we well, we gonna... this is going to be an easy conversation. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's happening in the evening. So looking at Silverthorne, right? They have the state tax, the county tax, the Silverthorne tax. I'm assuming MTS is their transit tax and then the housing authority tax. So Silverthorne's at 8.3 or 8.8. Um, so interesting. Okay, okay. So uh, more homework to do on that. Um, and then do you want to look at pool operation numbers? Sure. Yeah. Um, Maybe I can go back to my emails from 2014. Um, okay. For what? See if I have anything with city and county sales tax. Well, that's what I'm looking at. It's like it was something in 2009. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so thank you uh, to the pro staff and for Adam being on this evening. So um, they pulled 2016 through 2020 uh, expenses to operate um, the pool. Uh, that includes the staff costs, the other expenses. Um, and then revenues for you to look at as well. Adam, uh, feel free to to point out anything um, that you want on this. Otherwise, the numbers are, are pretty self-explanatory. But but go ahead if you have anything. Can I add? So does does the staff costs include? Is that both part time and full time salaried? Folks, because I thought it was higher. I thought I thought those numbers didn't include. Yeah, don't include the aquatic coordinator salary. Well, nineteen and twenty. Um, so I don't know when you reduce that. Um, I'm I'm not sure, and I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can easily parse out our part time staff because a lot of the a lot of the the youth that we hire, you know, they'll they'll yeah. work at Huck Finn, they'll work at um, Dutch, um, they'll work all over right that's right unless they're specifically you know like lifeguards coded um, somehow well yeah all right and also well so that staff cost is probably higher plus it's inflated i mean just wages have gone up you know 10 to 30. um no adam we cannot hear you Um, but you are unmuted. And, yeah, oh, you, uh, you can hear me now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is ridiculous. Sorry. Ah, uh, it's good to be there in person. Um, yeah. So there is. We, I didn't track all of that because I was trying to get my silly microphone to work here. But um, you know, those those staff costs. The way that it was reported, there must have been a change to another software, Digiquatics, to to capture. Um, the aquatic center coordinator, and so that was that was a full time staff, and I believe some uh, lifeguard. Um, 
salary was in there as well. So, you know, some of that is not captured in that. And in the quick turnaround, I wasn't able to pull that together. Um, but that's why those numbers are pretty low. Uh, I would say based on what I know of how the pool was operated at that time, um, you would need a pretty significant increase on the staff side. And so those yeah. costs, I would, I would think, you know, 50% 50 50 to be conservative, maybe even doubling it um, to get kind of a realistic picture there. Um, I threw the revenue in there as well because, you know, there was some some stuff in the email thread of, of uh, you know, a, a, an aquatic center being free of charge. And so I just wanted to show where some of the revenue did come in from that. Uh, and it was, you know, not trivial, but not, not going to blow you away on that as well and so, but um you know i thought it was a nice comparison to show what those expenses are and that row four the other expenses uh my level of confidence that that captures everything that you know might not be over in a maintenance budget or a um or an account, a, a p l or something uh, or in public works um you know, I I I kind of take these numbers and and maybe uh, pad them a little bit to feel a little more comfortable with the true operational costs. Okay. I, I also recall the stuff in line four that includes yeah things that like public works maintenance would do, but it does not include any sort of like major maintenance you know, and sort of like routine supplies. But it doesn't include any like capital, you know, or like hiring contractor to fix anything or assess anything. So mm -hmm. it doesn't include like major repairs, which are going to be a bigger, lumpier, wouldn't initially occur for a new facility, but, you know, yeah. Yeah, and but, you know, I think those costs are pretty uh, significant when considering that we're, what I've heard is talking about restoring the current site. And, you know, those, those big boiler costs and, and things like that are not captured in here. So yeah, I, I would say that's that's pretty spot on. Okay. And then also something that came up in the school board discussion last week or whenever that was at the beginning, I can't remember. <laughs> um, uh, that, I mean, that there's also no no contribution to a replacement fund or you know. Which is kind of what got us here. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> so just, you know, some, some, ideally in an operational cost total that you would want to be covering from whatever revenue stream, there'd be a, you know, capital acquisition replacement fund kind of line item that would be, you know, non trivial. Yeah. 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 Okay. I would say also the the staff cost line does not that it that doesn't include any of you know Karen and Felicia's time, which was pretty significant in um, helping manage the operations there, doing the hiring, rehiring. There there was some significant turnover there, but that's again I'd I'd <laughs> I'd be padding those numbers if I'd think about the true operational costs. That's good. And I think to restart too, right? Like, there's going to be some additional cost with getting people certified to be able to train lifeguards and maintain the uh, uh, just the day to day like chemical balance in the pool and those kinds of things. Like, those are also uh, some yeah. trainings that cost. Like, those upfront costs may not be like uh, amortized over a series of years, but the the initial startup costs should be slightly inflated, I think. And that's, an should, that's an interesting point. Like those initial startup, sort of yeah. staff and mm -hmm. operational questions. I mean, like hopefully construction would be like include costs to turnkey. Yeah. But that's a really good point. And I think that Karen Felicia could give us an idea of like what trainings or staff capacity they would need to be able to that the pros department would need to be able to like make that a reality. So like, I don't know if that would include Adam 
handing that all the way off to that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> handing that all the way off to like Felicia and hiring somebody else to coordinate adult programming or I don't know what that would look like, you know what I mean? So it, it could be like a, an additional full staff type person with getting Well, I'd like to recognize a member of the public here to make both comments. This is Abigail. <laughs> Abigail. <laughs> well, and I, I think too, it's important to, you know, consider, right, like uh, 2016 minimum wage compared to 2023. Sure. You know, those, also just like those yeah. added inflationary uh, and costs as well yeah um, and materials and supplies I and mean, everything yeah. is going to be yeah plus i mean the other plus the pool could be bigger mm -hmm. right. than the footprint that that's based off of so, so i don't know if you need like more lifeguards if you have like a lane and a rec pool oh um, yeah i i, I mean yeah, i'm just making stuff up but per, like, section yeah of yeah the pool? I, yeah uh, I would say, you know, after after talking with with Fee and Karen a hot run, and then you know, I, I was checking out the the rec center down in Fruta, which you know they they also brought some things to the voters, whatever, ten years ago for for their site with shared services, indoor outdoor pool. The the thing with staffing and what it takes to run it, it it really is not just something you 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 add on to, to the existing uh, folks who, who do have certification. Karen and Fee do have uh, varying levels of certification for you know managing different parts of an aquatic center. Um, but I I would think it if if pros were ever to be in the, in you know if we're talking real uh, that the, we would have an interest in running it, I would think of kind of a you know, a, a manager level person, leadership, you know, high leadership to run that, an aquatic center director that kind of manages the programs, uh, has a dedicated maintenance person there because there are all sorts of things uh, that come up with managing the pool and it could be shut down because of certain safety levels or chemical levels very, very easily. And so having dedicated staff for that, I think that's no small thing to think about uh, that would come with a, you know, a, a salary level that I would think is uh, appropriate for kind of the upper management kind of person. Um, so I think it, it would, it would be a dedicated staff, you know, a few people with lifeguards on top of that uh, to make, to make it happen. Otherwise, you know, I hear these stories of you getting called at two in the morning because an alarm goes off for some reason, you know, chemical yeah. level, I just got to go do the cleaning. It's just, that is not efficient. That's not a real professional way to run it. So dedicated staff, you know, bump those numbers way up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I don't know if we're jumping ahead, but like, or this question is jumping ahead, but do you, I mean, that to me raises the whole question of like, we don't even know the exact specs of this pool. We don't know the operational entities that might be considered to run it. I mean, I, I think it's a possibility the county could run it, right? <laughs> but there are other professional entities out there that could be vendors. Yeah, like a concierge uh, service kind of thing. Yeah, or yeah, or I, I don't know what the mountain is it mountain rec that runs the Eagle That's ones right. above. I think they're like a special mm -hmm. district. Like I just feel like there are models that haven't been explored, so we don't even know. I don't know. You, you think an operational entity would want to be at the table with this? I, I mean, I sorry. I just don't know what order like you you go in. It, it just seems yeah. like we're we're at the stage not knowing. Yeah, what even the pool ends up looking like. Trying to guess what the operating costs would be. Yeah, yeah, because it, and two, if you decided to contract this out, typically there's going to be a markup on everything, so it's going to cost more than if you did it in house, but you might not have the resources yeah. locally to do it yeah. in house. That's right, that's a good point. But I think, too, it depends on the size of the facility, like you're saying. Um, all yeah. of that. I mean, everything that the size, the types of pools, the type of you know, facility you're using, and stuff that dominoes all the way down to what your 
chemicals and mm -hmm. electricity and water and all that kind of stuff. Well, and like heating cost. the water. Yes. I mean, that could be astronomically different, different than the utility cost that we have in that line item now, because if if we decide, like if they decide to go all electric, like that can be significantly different than natural gas to heat that, to heat the pool. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of, I don't know that we can really run this into, until it's we what, have information on. Yeah, what it, what it is, as is, is Consumer said, the, the, the specs of what is being proposed to be built, essentially, even. You need that in order to determine, number one, how much of a sales tax you would need to build it, and then also, two, you, until you have those specs, you won't be able to know what the operating costs are going to be for it. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. And well, then, well, they would preliminarily get that, though, from, who's the, who's the, is it DPM? The owner's rep, yeah. The owner's rep. But, and so they have a pool consultant under. So she, Colleen could theoretically get, like, there's a rough scope. I mean, they have a rough scope of what they think, you know, I forget if it's nine or 10 million or something. I mean, they have a rough scope of, like, what size pool they think can be covered, but they don't have, they don't have a design or pricing okay. and they haven't had any discussions with other entities about, you know, going out for additional grant funding the way they are with best on the classroom size mm -hmm. to expand what's possible. Mm -hmm. So that's what gives me pause on whether we even know between not having gone in to get even preliminary pricing. I mean, they have like really preliminary pricing, but. I, my recollection from the school board meeting was they they basically updated with 2022 2023 materials and sub pricing what the estimate from 2019 was okay. right that we did so it does at least count for inflation yeah yeah yes no there i mean their 10 million i think is is not i mean i think it's realistic it's just not based on a detailed site design. Okay. Because okay. I, I, I mean, when you talk to PB Swims, they want, you know, they're going to have the pool with the walk-in, with the shallow side, you know, the infant toddlers and all the things. And then I don't think the school board has that level of detail of like, yes, that pricing will accommodate that need. So I don't know what that looks like, but yeah, okay. I think also yeah the 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 infrastructure itself, yeah, the 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 pool itself, but also perhaps uh, factor in the the operational side. I mean, where a business plan um, put together to um, <laughs> kind of show the level of investment and detail that you know. Uh, a team that's going to operate this is focused on. I think you know. There's, for me, I, I there's a lot of pause to take it on, even as the county with with support, because you know we're also making some assumptions in these numbers that we're looking at, and so you know I I just I, I think there's a lot of uh, quick movement before um, um, deeper thought on that. Yeah, the foundation and, of this. I, 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 you know, I'm trying to pick my words carefully. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand that. And, and something you, I mean, that that sounds spot on. But also triggered to me is like, just because it's a county sales tax doesn't mean the county is committing to be the operational entity. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, we, you know, the sales we tax. We just can run the ballot measure. We run the ballot measure and would commit to transferring the revenue. So the to, whatever entity is actually the entity, entity chosen to, yeah. to operate it, kind of like the yeah. land service. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could do that. Kind One of question like I had, and forgive me if I missed it, when you were doing the budget stuff, did that include insurance? Um, we, no, what and I that? did have the, um, I, I did pull the insurance numbers. And I, is it 14,000 or 45? It was 90, um, 90 for that to, address. Yeah, um, for, yeah, because that was at its valuation. No, but there's an additional. No, I expense. think that was the amount. Okay. Yeah, I the, think it was the amount. Yeah, yeah. So there's 
and have that on Because there's a much higher liability risk with operating a pool than yeah. many other recreational facilities. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess the other point, I, I mean, I, Adam, I think you were sort of talking about this earlier is like if, you know, uh, other counties or jurisdictions sort of have a bit of a, a, a bit of a more, a more like a rec district be that has like a broader scope of recreation, you know, support for recreation. And we've sort of talked about that over the years. <laughs> as something we might go for. So, I mean, I guess the concern I have is like, I don't feel like, I don't want to go to the voters like multiple times for different bits and pieces of a sales tax to support recreational mm -hmm. programming. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I generally see the point of going to something that also charges like visitors <laughs> for things they're, u they're using and spreading that not just onto the local resident mm -hmm. property tax base that a bond would. But I don't feel like we've done our homework. I mean, we weren't prepared at the count on the county side to take this to the voters for rec as a whole. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I gotta say, I'm reluctant to sort of like hop in to a narrow sales tax that then potentially leaves out other, like maintaining and operating other county assets that we're working through with with Adam in this position. Sorry, yeah. that was like a long, very long sentence. No, but I, <laughs> I, I agree with you because I think if we can capture more broadly recreation as a whole, um, it just gives recreation in perpetuity like some funding where yeah. you know when, when we talk about things getting tight and things that the county is obligated to fund statutorily recreation is not included in that list um not to say that recreation doesn't add to like the quality of life but if you if you get to a catastrophic economic event where you're like slashing things left and right you know yeah yeah, like you have to provide some some services compared to others, and so I I just think that if we can incorporate a more uh, wide widened scope of mm -hmm. recreation. Well, and even beyond recreation, sorry. No, no, that's good. Um, you know, I mean, a year ago we had been talking about like you know, looking at the JP County 1A model where they had, you know, a, a sales tax combined to support some core funding for implementing wildfire mitigation. And we now have a plan, mm -hmm. but, you know, the wildfire mitigation, some recreation management, and then um, also ag and open space preservation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those are all still things we're trying to beef up here. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, no, it, I, it just I, makes me think more and more like we should just stop and think a little bit more before going to voters for a sales tax. And then I think also a question to the school district is like why why does this have to happen this year? Like we could address operational costs once we even know the pool's gonna get built. Mm -hmm. Like if the bond passes we can explore a sensible sales tax. Well, and I guess that's the other thing, right? Like, operating in. You don't want to put this on the ballot and this passes, but the <laughs> issue right. doesn't pass, right. and then I, you're stuck with this money I, that. I, I mean, it would, it would have to be written conditionally. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know how that works. I. Was I the hospital stuff do. written that way? Was the what? Hospital stuff written that way? The ambulance where. Our ambulance contribution would happen if the other uh, hospital ballot measure passed. Oh, they were they on the same ballot? They were on the uh -oh. same ballot. Yeah. But I don't remember. I don't know. Kind of violated single subject. I mean, I don't know. I, I, yeah, no, I, I don't I know. I just either. know that there was. I know that, that when that went to the ballot, it was. Um, like communicated that way like this has to pass 
you have to vote yes on both of these because both of these have to happen for the hospital to survive kind of thing. Or is that the campaign behind it? Maybe. Okay. That that could be it too. I yeah. don't I don't remember all the way, but but I don't know how you make that conditional. I don't know. But Or I feel like you can also can you write a sales isn't the amb doesn't the ambulance one like all there's that complicated language of like it authorizes like collecting up to a certain amount mm -hmm. up to yeah. three point eight mills that's yeah. what I'm reading right now so so you could write it that way and then you actually wouldn't even need you wouldn't need to implement that until the pool is built because you know have anything yeah. Um, so you could, I say, but then so I think you, you get into not, the. I, I don't. I also don't want to get into the position of like. The city has a has an initiative where they have a pavement fund or a pave, road paving fund that was supposed to be implemented and then didn't get implemented. And so now, like that's a whole, you know. Um, there isn't anything, but there isn't anything conditional about the ambulance walking okay. to the present. Okay. I mean, it was out there. It, the only wiggle room, if you will, is that the up to language. It, yeah. It's not that it's this is conditioned on something else because it's also written so that it, to the, the ballot resolution was to enter into an IGA with for the ambulance service with the same vessel uh, or another contractor. Yeah. So it, yeah. So flexibility there. Yeah. Okay. But there wasn't anything saying that this doesn't apply if you know something else doesn't happen. The, There's no condition proceeding. Because at this in the same year, <laughs> the, the hospital went to the ballot to increase their mill levy. I well. I don't know. I'm just I, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I have an next issue to raise. Sure, go for it. <laughs> and, 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 and Chris, please stop me if we shouldn't talk about this as county commissioners, but I do. <laughs> um, I, I am concerned uh, in July to put something on the ballot where there isn't an organization already set up to run the campaign. Yeah, to, I, and I think that's a concern too. If, I mean, that's yeah. non trivial, like, because I've yeah. been involved in two school. Right bond vote campaigns in a personal capacity and you know like for the successful bond vote for the elementary school we we had a ten thousand we had we had a ten thousand dollar plus campaign right we've been raising money all year developing messaging all year for that. we had money for direct mail i mean you need to have your shit together excuse me um when you have the same cautionary tale with the justice center initiative yeah yeah and it didn't have um, funding for that and it, it was just thrown together. at the last minute yeah having people writing personal checks to pay for advertising for it and yeah and it wasn't even clever yeah it was like one one and a half cent where like if they would have just said hey give us cent. your two cents <laughs> isn't that what is that a better campaign slogan so I know PB Swims exists and you know presumably there will I mean if the school goes for a bond vote for construction there would be an organized you know an organized campaign I just feel like there needs to be a discussion on the campaign side about who is who is committing to run the campaign this is it is it the entity that will run the school vote you know school bond campaign well i'm sort of speaking to the school board people who will listen to this recording right right well and i um, I, mean, I do i do think it is worthwhile for you know the electeds to to think through this and and, and have a plan we have dollar resources for planning grants we have we we have things available, so we you if you so choose, you know, to refer something to the ballot, it can be well thought out. Do mm -hmm. you use DOLA funds to plan a? Well, no, but I think what he's saying is you can use oh. DOLA funds to plan the the pool. Oh, plan oh the, right. Yeah, yeah. get a get a contractor yeah. to do that. Yeah. You know, feasibility work, I guess, if you will. Yeah. Like, okay, here's what you're going to need year after year after year, and here's your, I did your, uh. Yeah. First year operating costs and it's inflated for X, Y, and Z, and 
here's what you need for this size facility or to even help with designing of the facility, right? Like, just like here's a rough schematic design of what needs to happen at the at that piece of the facility because if that's going to be separate from any money needed to be used for academics, like we could totally use that as a match to any other money. That yeah. Happen, right. But those yeah. Are that administ Go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I just, you know, I'm tracking this conversation. I'm, I appreciate all of all of what you're saying because it's shared services, you know, kind of having a, an approach that is not so hyper-focused on, on kind of one item and then maybe having to go to that well again later on down the road when there are bigger uh, rec investments we want to make. And I'm alluded to some of those bigger ones yesterday in, in the budget talk. I think, you know, bringing up the Chafee's 1A is is big. I think, you know, if this is a serious move, uh, reaching out to those folks that, uh, you know, the the reason that was successful is because of a couple, several years of community dialogue and the community feeling invested in, in actually setting those four priorities that the Common Ground Fund now supports and it supports through a formal rfp process too so i mean it's it, there there are lots of opportunities for other nonprofits in that community other you know parts of, of the municipal system to to tap into that but it's all addressing identified community needs where an entity or a champion took the time to to do the campaign that you're that you that you brought up there jeff and and that is no small small thing, and um, you know there there are there are things that can be learned from from that process down south. And I think the <laughs> trying to get ballot language together in two weeks to do something kind of similar, where, where we looked to our partners that down south that did it um, over a couple of years, I think uh, is worth a rethink. So or worth more thinking is what I should say. Yep. What is That's the back from either the school district or students ones about waiting another year to see what happens with for this year? Uh, I, I think that I really just think it from my conversation with Jane, I don't know that she actually put like a time stamp on it. Um, but I don't know that they know like the time frame of like, hey, this needs to go out in like seven days. Yeah, and that's 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 part of why. I mean, again, I think the school board's initiative if they want to pursue that in terms of building it, test the water adequately for this community as to if that's what they want to do before the county also layers on and goes through all of the effort to be yeah. on one at the same time about operating something that the community might say we're not ready to support that right now. Yeah, I mean, I like just from the school board discussion on this, I can sort of relate two things. One is I think there was a a desire to to be responsible and think about the operational costs and sort of be able to say to the community that there's a plan for that given the history of the pool before. So I, so I think that's why they're not, I mean, there's a desire not to just punt it. Well, <laughs> um, and, okay. and, and, then just, and then the other thing that came up from their bond council or advisors was that because of the difference in construction versus operating costs, it does need to be two different measures. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can give them very similar titles and run it as a combined campaign, but legally they have to be two different questions on the, could they, yeah, but could the and, school board run theirs with the premise of if this is approved, then the county will do a ballot initiative for to for a sales tax for operation and you, for operating costs. I mean, that's where my brain is going. Is sort of, I mean, I, I don't I don't know if a county or city together would be comfortable sort of writing a letter of support that's what with I was that, just, I was you know, about that too, like a letter commitment. of intent. 
Um, um, I don't even write a letter of intent to the voters. No. To <laughs> <laughs> um, want to talk to but I mean, you know, we could make a public statement and be part of the campaign. Um, um, and, 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 and I do see that I, 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 I mean, the one thing I do appreciate is because a sales tax does capture money from visitors too, it does feel like inherently more fair if it's a facility that visitors will use as well. And given the property tax increases, you know, it sort of seems to spread the pain a little bit. Yeah. Because um, you can only do so much with property tax before you start like shooting yourself in the foot with affordable housing, right? Yep. You're like, hey, here's a house. Yeah. Your property taxes are too much for you to live there, but so you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I like what you're saying with like a letter of support, like great, move forward with your ballot measure. Once we know that yeah. outcome, that'll give us the ability to say, like going into the new year, put that into an AIP of okay, now we want to pursue this ballot measure, but we want to pursue it with a wide scope and not such a narrow scope of only pool operations because we want to encompass what this new pros department yes. is yeah. envisioning for yes. implementation of the rec master plan that we just did, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I guess we can just follow up on that. The, uh, the email chain with Dr. Massey and the school board folks, and I can work with Chris on understanding how we divvy up our sales tax in Lake County, and we'll add it to our city list. <laughs> well, and that was one thing you asked the question in terms of the sales tax, the one that's existing. Um, it does have language in it, it says that there's nothing in it that is intended to um, bind the county, um, so it's, uh, the parties acknowledge that they intend to bind future Lake County Board of County Commissioners or future Leadville City Council. So this is the one, unless there's it's something else. It's, it's, it's a MOU IGA from 2009 yes. talks about establishing that. And so that means that there is the opportunity to read those. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense because there was a. Yeah, there's no specific initially. term. I think that was initially born for the city to have an additional revenue stream mm -hmm. because they didn't have a sales tax. Right, right. And so that... Because so, theoretically that should all be ours. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that, well, this came out of the city suing the county and the Department of Revenue and that kind of stuff because it wasn't getting any of the sales yeah. tax revenue. Mm -hmm. And so there is an opportunity, and there's no term on this, unlike the like ambulance. You know, you that's for 25 years, there's not a new term yeah. to this. So, just to be clear, like, I don't think it's a bad thing that the city collects sales tax in their jurisdiction because they are able to provide services with it. Mm -hmm. Because if they didn't, then that would be a much and bigger you, burden on us for exactly. Other, exactly. other services. But going forward, I think we want to make sure that we have our ducks in a row for if we're collecting a sales tax or we put a sales tax on the ballot. That the county is going to realize all of that revenue not under that idea well and that's why i'm saying yeah. yeah there's an opportunity to revisit this for that purpose mm -hmm. yeah before and i think this is timing is perfect because then this might give us like a year mm -hmm. to do this before we put something on yeah. the ballot and and get that political will of like yes hey if we if we yeah. go for this and we increase the sales tax rate, local rate from 4% to 6%, you realize that your the city is not going to get that additional 2%. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. All right. Because what is that that we would keep? Um, through six months, it's 1.6 million. Yeah. So that's a lot of opportunity for us. It sure is. Okay. Well, we will we'll do our homework. Um, any, any parting shots? Thoughts? No shots. Okay. Not shots. Sure. Yes. <laughs> no. Whoops. Um, Thanks, Dan. I covered all the things. Okay. 
I don't have anything additional right now. Okay. I think I, I think we feel pretty much in consensus though about like we're not going to rush into this in the next six days. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a work session, not a full meeting. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I I just feel like it's really late to be thinking about this and designing it smartly. So so some more just sort of like you know strong public strong support of the school's bond initiative and then you know to, to towards being part of you know professional operational management like part in like a partner in figuring that out mm -hmm. um and, and yeah we uh liz on the 27th change is coming so you have a work session on the 27th at 9 a.m. Did she not say hold? Hold the time? No, like, no. Don't do it? Hold off. Oh. She said, please hold a place for PV swims on that date in case the VOCC does not propose a sales tax increase to fund operation. So, um, okay. So, so we will have more extensions. Yeah, so okay. yes, yes. Um, but, but they will come. And I think, I mean, okay. I think Jane will appreciate all of this information mm -hmm. and the, perhaps the board's request for partnership and cooperation on planning um, things. Um, and I think we can articulate then that we're not anti swimming pool ever in Lake County, right. but we want to thoughtfully plan out additional revenue and tax burdens on residents and visitors in Lake County right. to support recreation activities and our master plan. Yeah. I don't think that sounds too far fetched. Yeah. Um, Adam, any anything else? Uh, no, I don't. I I appreciate those those last words from commissioners. Yeah, it's uh, something that's a little little, uh, little time to think about it. Um, and and yeah, that's that. That's all I have okay. to add. All right. Thank you, and I I appreciate the quick turnaround on everything. Thank you. Thanks, yep. Adam. Um, have a good evening. All you right. too. Bye. Bye.